This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World. Today I'm at Poplar Hall, my home and farm. I walked the fields this morning. I got a chance to see the beautiful mature trees changing colors. Anything from the beautiful sugar maples that we have. There's some beautiful pin oaks. We even have an amazing old persimmon tree that I love. But my favorite tree, believe it or not, is the black walnut. We have about eight of them on the property. Today I'm going to harvest the nuts for a future program, but the halls are going to be turned into an amazing black walnut dye, and I'm going to make a very cool project out of it. Stay tuned. So the black walnut is a really cool fruit. Now you heard me say fruit because that's actually what this really is. People get it mixed up that this is considered a nut. Believe it or not, a walnut is, is a stone fruit, very similar to a peach because you have a, the outside hull which encompasses the, the hard covering of the seed which is what we consider the walnut shell. So this is really a complex uh, tree and a complex fruit. So, the walnut itself, if you look at what you're normally at least cracking for, for festivities and Christmas and things, it's inside this beautiful green hull. Now, what we want to do is when we work with these, we want to get rid of the hull, okay? But it's very important because I love trees that serve two to three purposes. Because a black walnut, or a walnut in general, is an amazing hardwood, the tree itself. It also is, makes incredibly beautiful furniture. Uh, a lot of hardwood flooring is made out of walnut, not to mention amazing hardwood furniture, which again is truly beautiful wood if you look at the grain and the color. Inside this beautiful green ball is a very dark black pulp. Okay, that's what's going to create our fabric dye. If used correctly, you can also make a stain for furniture. Okay, so when we do projects like this, you always need to know what you need for the tools of the trade. So I'm doing this by our fireplace because I'm going to have to steep the, um, the dye that we're making. But to make them correctly, this is what you need. A mallet or a hammer is fine to remove the outside hull. Some type of support mechanism, whether it be a desk or a workshop, that's fine. You need your black walnuts. You'll need a pot to simmer the, uh, the hulls when you put water in it. And lastly, you need a bucket to put your your nuts into that into that bucket because we're going to rinse them off because these are going to be dried and again we're going to be making an amazing dessert from these walnuts okay now's the time to start to harvest the walnuts now we're going to do two things we're going to take the hull off with our hammer we're going to take the walnut inside we're going to put it in its own bucket because that will be sitting in water and we're going to rinse it so we can dry the, the, the black walnuts for later use the walnut shell is so incredibly hard that insects rarely can get inside. So one thing to know whether they're good or bad, when you put them in water, if they float, then you get rid of them because they could have something wrong with them. But if they do not float, they're ready to, they're ready to be eaten. So, let's go. You want to save the hull because we're going to be making our fabric dye out of that. When working with black walnut, you, when you work with these hulls, black walnut itself is a really, really compact, complex tree. The reason I say that is because this pulp that we're going to be using to, to create our dye or our stain has an amazing chemical to it, okay? Now, a lot of people will use black walnut mulch to kill other trees. So when you think about planting one, make sure you do your due diligence to make sure there's no trees or shrubs around that area. Because even if I was to take these X hulls and dump them under a tree, that the, the, the tannins in the uh, black walnut could possibly kill that tree. So again, we're talking about a very interesting tree at this point. Okay, so we have our hulls. This is the, the, the flesh to the outside of the fruit, which is the seed inside what we would consider the nut. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simmer this pulp down. These hulls will be simmered down for about 30 minutes on our open fire. And that's really gonna pull all this black, beautiful black dye out of this. Once it simmers, we're gonna let it cool 
we're going to strain all this pulp out of it and we're going to be left with a beautiful dark blackish brown dye that we can use to tie dye our shirts. Okay, so we take our pot with our holes in it and now we want to put it onto the fire. So when you do this, you want to make sure you fill up with your water just enough to go over top all the hulls. You don't need too much because this is going to almost be a stew. It's going to break apart. I think we're good. Okay, we can stir it around. Talk about a witch's brew. Wow, look at that. Oh, you can already see it's black. Wow, and you want this, when this, this is almost like a soup. So when you want it to cook down, this heat is gonna cause it all to break apart. Over top of our heat. We're gonna let this sit. We're gonna stir it a little bit. We're gonna allow it to simmer for 30 minutes and it comes off of the heat and then we'll strain it for our dye. Now guys, listen, we all know that everyone has t-shirts, but they really have a lot of leftover regular work business shirts that they can do something interesting with. Instead of just throwing them away, let's recreate them with a little bit of brown black walnut dye. And it's gonna really give a new life to these shirts. So what I wanna do here, is I'm looking for kind of a linear look here. So lay it down. Lay it down flat. So we're gonna roll this up. Use, a, use your rubber bands. So we have our shirts done. They have the dye on them. We're gonna put them in a, in a bag like this, it's a regular clear plastic bag with the, with the top open. And they're just gonna sit in there and they're gonna kinda of just dry a little bit and then we'll be able to take them out and finish our shirts. This is so exciting. We dyed our shirts with our homemade black walnut dye and now's the time to show them to you. Believe it or not, I know it seems crazy, but this is the Oxford shirt that I dyed. It looks absolutely killer. I'm so excited about it. It's nice and subtle. It feels incredibly fashionable. It has perfect striations. It's not over the top, but to me, it's kind of what I really truly wanted. I wasn't looking for black or deep dark brown. I love the idea that it's a little subtle grays and a little bit, a little slight bit of mustard, but ultimately it's a little bit of a tan and gray. I love it. Even cooler, we did our t-shirt. It looks absolutely perfect. It has a nice striation to it. Almost has a little bit of a tie-dye feel, but again, I think this project to me is simplicity and really keeping it, keeping it minimal. Um, you have the striations, which I think are beautiful, but it's really simple. And you could wear this with anything. When you go into crazy colors, I think it gets too much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. So our black walnut dye can also be used as a wood or furniture stain. So today I'm gonna to take a very simple pine cutting board to show you what the look we're achieving is once we stain it. Look how beautiful and rich this color that we received from the, from the stain that we've used. It's all natural. We're doing a cutting board for a reason because we don't want any chemicals to get into your food. So we, we stewed down our own black walnut hulls, created our dye and stain 100% natural. No additives to it, no chemicals. And since this is a cutting board, it's gonna be simple, easy, and really healthy for you to use. The one thing I wanted to remind you is that black walnuts are considered a superfood. So it is loaded with antioxidants and we've used black walnuts for thousands of years for medicinal purposes. Not to mention all the amazing benefits that black walnuts use and give people. Believe it or not, just like we did our cutting board and our, and our shirts, 
This amazing product was used as a hair dye back in the day because it's natural and it provides your hair with a beautiful dark auburn tone. In an up and coming episode, we're gonna take the walnuts that we have dried. They've been sitting, they'll be sitting for three to four weeks. They're gonna season, then we're gonna crack them open. We're gonna de-shell them and make one of the most beautiful desserts out of them. This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World, reminding you whenever you try to do something, make sure you always work to move people. Cheers. <laughs>